What's going on everyone, my name is Coder Moore and welcome back to the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series Episode 19. In this episode, we are going to work a lot with the worlds. Now I went ahead and I changed my world1.txt file to be a 20 by 20 tile map so we get a bigger map. And if we go ahead and run this, this is obviously not 20 by 20 tiles. The whole map is not fitting on the screen, it's actually being drawn outside of the screen so we can't see everything. And if we go ahead and move our player off the screen into more of the map, we can't see him anymore, we, we kind of lose him, and we can't see the whole world. So we have to add some way so that we are able to move around the map so we can follow the player around or other entities. That way we can use bigger maps but keep obviously the same screen size and the same tile size. Now before we actually get started today, we have to change a few things to make our life a lot easier. Inside of this entity class, we are going to have every single entity take in a game object called game, and up here we'll create a protected uh, protected game object, which I'll call game. Go ahead and import that, and then inside of the constructor here, we'll do this dot whoops this dot game equals game like so. And since we changed the entity class here, in the creature class in the constructor, we're gonna have to take in a game object game and just pass that along to the super constructor like so, and make sure to import that as well. Then inside of our player class, we're actually already taking in a game. The only change we have to make is delete the game variable from the player class and instead just pass the game variable into the super constructor so it goes on to the creature class and then the entity class. And make sure to remove this.game equals game because we don't need that anymore. Now this is going to function the exact same as it already did, except now instead of just a player taking in a game, every single entity or creature is going to have to take in a game object as well. And we're actually going to add that to the world as well. The world constructor is going to take in a game object called game. And of course we have to actually create a game object game at the top of the world constructor and just set this.game equal to game. And I'm actually going to do this above where I load world. That way we set it first. And I'll import that. So those were just some basic changes so that everything takes in a game. Inside of this game state here, we are going to have to pass in the game to the world. That way we get rid of that error and everything is going to function the exact same way it did previously. Now let's get on to what we're actually learning in today's tutorial, how to move a map around. So I have a quick diagram here to illustrate what we are doing in today's tutorial. Basically, this big green box here, that represents our whole entire map, or world, sorry. So our whole entire world. Now currently, our screen can only view the upper left hand corner, a very small portion of this world. What we are going to do is we are going to create some type of camera class, and it's essentially going to be a camera. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to move around the portion of the map that we can see so we can move this little viewport to another portion on the map. And so basically we're essentially creating a camera that we're going to be able to move around the map so we can see different parts of it. So let's get on to actually programming this camera here. What we're going to do is I'm going to right click on my graphics package and I'm just going to create a new class and I'm going to name it game camera. So the game camera or the current view of of our map and the constructor for game camera so public game camera is going to take in an uh, I'm sorry a float value I'm gonna call it X offset and I'll explain these in a little and another float value called Y offset and inside of this class we are going to have two private float variables named X offset and Y offset and then in the constructor here all we have to do is do this dot X offset equals X offset here we go and this dot Y offset equals y offset. Whoops. Like so. So we're just setting those variables in the constructor. Now what exactly are these offset variables? Well, we see that these variable names have an x and y in them, so they definitely have to do with position, and they exactly do do that. Basically, here's a quick diagram. If you have a tile here drawn at position 0, 0, this is in terms of pixels, if your x offset is 10, basically every single tile is going to be moved to the left 10 pixels. So now this tile's position would be at negative 10 comma zero. And every single other tile would have an X position of what it usually would be except minus 10 pixels. And the same would go for Y. So these offset variables are basically just numbers that tell us how far off do we actually draw something from its original position. And it's actually extremely simple. It's as simple as I just explained it. Basically, how much do you add or subtract to the original position of something? So, we are going to go into our game camera here and we have to finish up this class, so I'm going to go to generate getters and setters for both of them. 
And inside of here, we are going to create a public void move method. And it's going to take in a float x amount and a float y amount, like that. And all we're going to do here is we are going to take our x offset and add to it the x amount that we passed in. And do the same for our y offset and add to the y amount. So what this move method does is it basically takes in these two numbers and it just adds them to the x and y offsets respectively. So this class literally only holds two variables, very simple, getters and setters, and a move method that just adds to those variables. That's literally the game camera class for right now anyways. Now in order to actually use this game camera, we're going to have to create an instance of it. So inside of my game class here, right below where I have input here, we are going to create a, uh, I'll, I'll name it, uh, just put a ca comment camera, and it's going to be a private game camera object, which I'm just going to name game camera. There we go, I can't type today. Make sure you import your game camera class, and then right below where I do assets.net, I'm just going to set game camera equal to a new game camera object. And since we're first initializing it, obviously we want to initialize it as 0, 0. This way everything is drawn at its normal position because it's not shifted in any x or y direction. And down here where we have the get key manager method, we are going to add a very similar method, public game camera, get, whoops, get game camera, like so, and that's just going to return our game camera object. Now actually, while we are in our game class, I made a mistake in like the first tutorial. It's not really a mistake, more like personal preference or programming practice. We have public int width and height, the width and height of our window. I'm actually going to change those variables to be private. Again, it's better programming practice, at least in my mind. And we are, instead of having them public, we're going to change it to private, and we are just going to create some getters for it. So a public int get width, so this will get the width of the window, so just return uh, width, like so. And this has nothing to do with the camera, we're just changing those variables. Get width and get height, and we'll return height. So this is just getting the width and height of our window instead of having that variable or those variables public. Alright, so essentially what we did here is we created a game camera instance so that we can use it or access it through the game class here. So in our game state, what we're going to do is we are going to do uh, game dot get game camera dot we'll, we'll do the move method and we'll move it 100 pixels by 200 pixels on the Y. So this is just taking the X and Y offset variables and just adding 100 and 200 to them. And if we run our game, well, nothing happens. And that's because all we did was set two variables in our game camera class. We didn't actually use them anywhere. So inside of our world here, where we draw every single individual tile, is where we need to apply the offsets. We need to tell every single tile how far off from your original position should you go negative 10 pixels or should you add 50 pixels to your original position where you're going to be drawn. Now because the game camera class works in float values, what we're going to do is where we render the tiles, we're going to cast everything into an int. So I'm going to cast this into an int and add parentheses around x times tile width. And I'm going to do the same thing for y. We're just going to cast all of this into an integer and add some more parentheses around it. Now let's apply the game camera. We do x times tile width. That's just going to get us a regular position of the tile. And all we have to do is subtract game dot get game camera dot get x offset. It's as simple as that. We are just subtracting a variable from the position to render the tile at. And I entered down the line here, we're going to do the same thing for y. y times tile height minus game dot get game camera dot get y offset. Whoa, okay, that didn't work. Get y offset. No, nope, not working. Get y offset. There we go. Like so. So we're just subtracting whatever the x and y offsets are to the position in which to the screen that we're rendering these tiles to. Now if we run our game, we get a completely different portion of the map. So it's working. So if we go ahead and into our game state here and we change this back to 0, 0, so we don't move the, the camera at all, we're back at the original position. Again, a completely different area of the map. So our camera is essentially working. And even inside of this tick method here, what I'll do is I'll just do game dot um, get game camera dot move and I'll just move uh, by one and one on both axes so I'm go going to add one to the x and y offsets every tick and this will give us an illusion of our camera moving except we see an instant problem here the camera is moving and our world is moving behind it so we can see different areas of it except our player is also moving with the camera and when we move the player the camera is clearly not following the player around and we want it to do that 
So we have to implement a few more things. So I'm going to get rid of this test code inside of the tick method, and I'm going to get rid of this game uh, move method in the game state. And we're going to go back into this game camera method, and we are going to make a method that will basically center the camera on an entity and follow an entity around. Before we do this, our game camera, we actually want to take in a game object now. And up here we'll do uh, private game game, just like we did at the beginning of the tutorial. This duck game equals game, just so we have it, and we'll go ahead and import that. And we're going to create another method. It's going to be a public void center on entity method, and it's going to take in what entity to center the camera on, such as our player. And go ahead and import your entity class. So what this method is going to do is it's going to set the x and y offsets of the game camera to be the correct numbers, that way the camera is actually centered around whatever entity we pass into the center on entity method. What we're going to do is we're going to set our x offset equal to the entity's x position, so e.getx, minus the game.getWidth, so the screen width, so the x position of our entity minus the game screen width, divided by 2, and we're dividing by 2, this way the player gets centered on the screen instead of at the edge of the screen, and we are going to do the same thing for the y offset, e.getY minus game.getHeight, so get the height of the screen, and divide that by 2, so we're centered instead of at the edge of the screen. Now we're going to go ahead and into our player class, and every, si every time we tick, after we call the move method, we are going to do game.getGameCamera, dot center on entity, and we're going to pass it this, meaning we want to center it on this player right here. Now before we can run this, go into your game class, and now our game camera actually takes in a game instance, so we can just pass it uh, this class right here, because we're in the game class, and that's because we added that into the game camera's constructor, and hopefully this will work. If you go ahead and run our game, well, first things first, we'll notice that the map is in a kind of a strange position, and when we move the player, it definitely does not look right. This is totally not correct. And that's because we're applying the offsets to every single tile to the world, but we're not actually applying the offsets to the player here, to the entity that's moving around. So in the player class here, and again, it's very simple to do this, uh, we're going to put parentheses around the x in the render method, and we just have to do x minus game dot get game cam dot get x offset, like so. And we're already casting this to an int, and we're going to do the same thing for y. y minus game dot get game cam dot get y offset, like so. This should now hopefully work if we run the game. Our camera now follows the player around. Now, this doesn't look quite centered, and that's because we actually centered it according to the upper left-hand corner of the player. And that's actually some really simple math. Go into your game camera, and where we uh, center on entity, or, uh, yes, entity, sorry. We just have to add to this e.getWidth, so the width of the entity divided by 2, and do the same thing for the, um, the, the y offset. Add e.getHeight divided by 2. So this is basically going to make sure the player gets directly centered in the screen no matter what size screen you have. And now when we move the player, it moves around the map properly, the map is moving, we can actually travel around our world, it follows the player around everywhere we go. This actually looks pretty good, you guys can experiment with a bunch of stuff here. You can try and make it so that the camera and the player maybe move a bit more smoothly, like they have a velocity to them. Again, this is all personal preference, but you can make a lot of changes here that look cool. Either way, we got a moving camera that moves around the map. Except there's an even bigger problem. We don't have any collision detection. Our player can walk right through these walls that I placed. So the next tutorial is going to be a really fun one, and it's going to be on collision detection. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.